Welcome to the Character Creator Cloth Creation Tutorial. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of making Character Creator compatible clothing with some third-party 3D applications. We'll touch upon Marvelous Designer for designing the clothing, ZBrush for sculpting, Maya for retopology, XNormal for texture projection, Photoshop for texture creation, and of course, Character Creator is required in the beginning and the end of the round trip process. First, Inside Character Creator, export an OBJ file for reference inside Marvelous Designer. And export an FBX file of the same character for rigging and setup inside Maya. In Marvelous Designer, I'm going to import the base body mesh by going to File Import OBJ. During the import process, set Load as Avatar, Scale set to Centimeters, and access to Y up. Also, I'll need to clear the default clothing by going to File New. Now, let's take a look at the code I'll be making inside Marvelous Designer. It's really important to gather good references that is concise and clear. I recommend carefully studying your references to see how the clothing is put together. Notice especially the seam lines and the major wrinkles. Let's take a look at the finished clothing made inside Marvelous Designer. Here, I have all the individual cloth pieces made, and when I press the spacebar to simulate the sewing, it all comes together to form the actual jacket. The beauty of Marvelous Designer is the natural look created by its cloth simulation. The actual creation process inside Marvelous Designer is outside the scope of this tutorial. There are many free resources online to look at if you wish to learn Marvelous Designer. Because it's difficult to sculpt on triangular faces inside ZBrush, I'll need to turn this coat into quads. First, I'll turn on the wireframe mode to get a better picture of the topology. Next, I'm going to select the cloth pieces in the 2D viewport and assign mesh type to quad under Property Editor Miscellaneous. Let's also turn back on the single-sided rendering. From Marvis Designer, I'll export yet another OBJ file, this time for sculpting inside ZBrush. Pay special attention to the export settings as it can be a bit tricky. Make sure that Select All Avatars is not checked to not include the body. Also that it's single mesh with Weld Set to On to merge all the parts and pieces together. Watch out for the Thick option as that can force the mesh to end weld. Only use the Thick option if you need the cloth to have extruded edges. Even if that was the case, you could be better off extruding the thickness in another software, as Marvelous Designer applies the extrude all over the clothing without discretion. Make sure that Unify UV coordinates and Centimeter Unit of Measure is checked. Now that the cloth is exported, I'll load it into ZBrush. But first, I'm going to load the base body OBJ to serve as a template when I'm sculpting the cloth. I'll go ahead and apply a skin-like material and make sure MRGB is set to on and apply the material. This way, when I save the brush or project, the material and the color settings are also kept. And subdivide it several times to get a smooth look. Next, I'll import the cloth OBJ separately and apply another material and color to it. Then I'll append it as a subtool to the base body. I'll also subdivide this mesh several times to prepare it for sculpting. Notice that I attached the jacket to the body instead of the other way around. This is so brush symmetry settings are based on the body and not on the jacket. Because the body template is symmetrical, so will be the brush. On the other hand, basing off of the cloth from Marvelous Designer can cause the brush symmetry to have an offset. Next, I'll turn on double-sided settings under the display properties, so the folded lapels will render correctly. Let's skip forward to where the jacket sculpt is complete. Zooming in, you can see that the folds and the stitches are meticulously created.
and a large part of the work is done on creating convincing wrinkles and folds. Now let's prepare this mesh by turning off the group option under export and export this jacket in the highest subdivision your system can handle. Be forewarned, the export can take some time to complete. Always save a copy of your file before you undertake long calculations that can crash midway. Next, I'll need to export a medium resolution mesh for retopology in Saimaya. I do this by setting the subdivision level under geometry to somewhere in the middle like 4. Inside Maya, I'll load the FBX template first via File, Import. This is the same character file I exported earlier from Character Creator. A common problem during import is that the surface shading may be a bit off. You can fix this by making sure the color space of the normal map is set according to the viewport engine. For example, inside Maya, I can turn the normal maps to raw color space to be compatible with their viewport 2.0 engine. Next. I'll import the medium resolution jacket. It should fit perfectly on the base body template. If not, then go back and fix the geometry in ZBrush. Now I'll activate the live surface function, which pretty much makes anything I do inside the 3D viewport stick to the faces of the jacket. Then I'll use the modeling toolkit for its quad draw toolset to start the retopology process. I can use this tool to lay down some points and create faces based on those vertex points. I'll keep doing this until the entire jacket retopology is created. Most major 3D software should have a topology tool similar to this. Now let's compare the mid-resolution mesh with the final retopologized mesh. As you can see, we have optimized the mesh to a degree that is easy to manage and animation friendly. Another advantage is that we now have very clean and orderly UVs for low poly, whereas the high poly has no UV mapping whatsoever. Orderly UVs will work best with Character Creator's Appearance Editor. Let's take a definitive look at the final polygon count for the jacket. So it's around a very comfortable 1,654 faces, or 3,280 triangles. We even have room to increase the poly count if needed, such as around the shoulders and elbows where the mesh bends. Next, I'm ready to project all the details inside XNormal. I'll go ahead and load the high and low definition meshes by right clicking and load the mesh. I'll click on the baking options to choose a location for the output files. And since I'm only doing a test render for now, I'll leave the size at 512 by 512 and output only the normal map. I like using XNormal because it's free and easy to use. It's also lightweight, so even with very little RAM and decent CPU, it can perform rather well. XNormal has multitude of options for every type of map projection imaginable. Another great thing about XNormal is that its projection algorithm is rather accurate. Now that the test render is done, I can see no problems with it. So I'll go ahead and render the large resolution maps by setting the size to 2048 by 2048. And I'll make sure to include the ambient occlusion and cavity maps. Beware that cavity map can take very, very long time to render. So you can access each projection setting by clicking on the options button. Here we can adjust the rays to something less intensive. In majority of the cases, having 128 rays is good enough for decent cavity map. 
In order to generate both the world space and tangent space normal maps, make sure to toggle the checkbox in the normal map options. So next, let's take a look at the final maps after projection and modification inside Photoshop. We have the rudimentary normal map, the world space normal map which is used for appearance editor, as well as the ambient occlusion map which is a combination of AO and cavity map with the levels adjusted. Now back inside Maya, I have essentially reset the scene with FBX template loaded. I'm going to file import to put the jacket inside. In the scene outliner, I'll select the jacket mesh and the root skeleton and go to skin, skin bind options. Next, I'm going to select bind to joint hierarchy with max influence set to the highest number possible. Now that is done, we have very basic skin bind of the jacket. Let's prune the weights by first selecting the body and then the jacket and go to Skin, Copy Skin Weight Settings. Make sure the surface association is closest point on surface. And you want the influence association set to the name of the bones. These settings will make sure the skin copy from the body to the jacket will have the best fidelity. I'll now enable the skeleton visibility so I can directly manipulate the joints to test the skin weight's results. If your third-party software of choice has an option to transfer skin weights, by all means take this route, as manual painting and manipulation of the skin weights can be extremely difficult to get right. Also, as you can see here, transferring the skin weights creates very good results with very quick, simple steps. Now's the time to export the entire character along with the jacket. I'm going to open the outliner again and make sure to select everything that is needed, such as meshes, the skeleton, and nothing more, to perform a FBX export. Try to use version 2012 of the FBX export if that is available, as that is most compatible with Character Creator's FBX software development kit. Very simply, I'll take this FBX file from Maya and drag it into Character Creator viewport. Because I used the default female character before, I'll just use the same default character for the base character. Next is the decrypt key file, which will contain bone scale information and DRM related information. You will find the key file in the same directory as the FBX template export. In the next pop-up, I'll set the jacket to a cloth layer other than one. Since jacket is usually on the outermost layer, I'll set it to a high layer order to play it safe. Any warnings and critical error messages will also show up in this pop-up window. Now that the jacket is in the scene, I'll need to adjust the material settings under the modify panel. By default, Character Creator will try to guess the material settings from the FBX file. But not every setting will carry over, so we'll need to adjust it anyway. I like to set the diffuse to pure white, ambient color to pure black, and specular color to light gray. Feel free to adjust these settings according to your own needs on a case-by-case -case basis. Next, the specular highlights will not show up until we have adjusted the specular and glossiness sliders. Specular controls the contribution of the highlights, while the glossiness controls the size and blurriness of the highlights. Once the material is adjusted, we can activate the appearance editor. and proceed to increase the resolution to 1024 by 1024 to get a better idea what's going on. I'll import the normal, world space normal, and ambient inclusion maps for the input maps. In this case, I don't have a RBG mask because the jacket is made of only one material. If you wish to create multi-material clothing, you can use the RGB mask to separate the cloth into different parts. Now, I'll need to adjust the fabric type to something more common, like this leather. And adjust the coloring with these handy hue, saturation, and lightness sliders. Let's tweak the material specular settings again. 
sometimes it's difficult to get a handle of the specular contribution unless you have applied some coloring. The jacket is looking pretty good by now, so I'll save it out as a CC cloth file. I'll do this by accessing the content panel and make sure to be in the right clothing jacket directory and press the plus button which will save the clothing to the custom part of the jacket directory. As you can see, the thumbnail now has a clothing icon and a number on the bottom right which represents its collision layer. Next, I'll reset the scene by going to File New and apply the jacket by double clicking on it. I'll also apply a pose from the calibration window to test out the skin weights. And it's looking pretty good. Let's start to put together an actual outfit along with this jacket. I do this by double clicking on some pre-existing assets from the essential clothing package. During the outfitting process, you will often have penetration issues with the different clothing layers. Character Creator provides a very handy tool to fix this issue via the cloth layer setting panel. Here you can reorder the clothing in relation with other articles of clothing within the scene. Or you can directly change the collision layer order assignment by clicking on the wrench icon. The prior setting will be saved with the character creator scene and the latter setting will carry the data when the clothing is saved out individually. Now I'll click on the run collision button to fix all the penetration issues based on the new settings. And that's it! Thanks for watching this cloth creation tutorial. Please check out our other tutorials under the Character Creator Content Creation family.